My name is Osada. When you're waking up the flowers, bringing the sunshine through as the ladies come to you. They have hot topics and interesting guests, making your Monday mornings the very best. It's Monday morning talks. We got the sauce. It's Monday morning talks. We walk the walk. It's Monday morning talks. This is Cesar here speaking loud and clear. It's Monday morning talks with So So, Michelle Lachey, and Miss J. It's Monday morning talks, y'all. Hey, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Monday Morning Talks. I am your girl, Soso, and I am here with my girl, Miss J. And we have a guest here with us, which is Heather Deanne. She's going to be here speaking with us uh, on today's topic. And Michelle Lachey will be tuning in with us pretty soon. We're just waiting on her. She has something to do, so she will be jumping in. So don't worry, y'all will be seeing Michelle. Uh, so, ladies, how are you all doing Good morning. Today? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Be I'm Heather. Sorry to call you again. I am good. I just got. <laughs> I just got off of an eight-hour shift, so. Um, oh. A little daisy, but I'm good. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, Heather. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Oh, of course, no of problem. course. So let's get into weekends, Miss J. How's so you, this past weekend, um, I got my second COVID vaccine, so I am fully okay. vaccinated now. Welcome to the vaccination ooh, ooh. club. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I officially got my offer letter to start with Cox Media Group, so I will be starting this week with them. Woo, yes. Woo. Woo, woo. If y'all know, I have been talking about this journey for the past two months. Yes, you have. <laughs> but it's been a process. There's been different steps I've had to take in order to secure this position, so it is official. In black and white and ink. So we have that. <laughs> Thank you. And then I was able to see my best friend Keisha. She was in town for one music festival um, with her boyfriend Josh. So we all got to hang out on Saturday. I'm kind of sad I missed out yesterday because uh, that was the really big headlining show. Uh, Kurt Franklin. I really, really wanted to see him oh. and the Isley Brothers and Little Wayne. So it was, it was a decent little show. But I did get to Wait, see my girl Ari. Kurt Franklin, Isley Brothers, and Little Wayne in the same house. Yes. Okay. Yes. All tight, all genres. Yes. Music. Okay. That's why it's called One Music Fest because it's all one music under one umbrella. They had different stages, so they had it spread out. But. Um, yeah, so it was. I did get to see Ari Lennox on Saturday, so I was excited about oh, that because that's my girl. I love Ari Lennox. Yes, this but is my yeah, mom. She much. says good morning. Hi, ladies. mom. Good morning. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty much my weekend. Um, that's fun. Daddy got, he had a little reaction on Saturday from his COVID uh, uh -huh. vaccine, so he was running a slight. Oh, you fever, gave it to you? Got him get it? Oh, she I says congratulations to you. Thank you, mom. Yeah, he um, had been exposed to COVID at school. Oh, that's right. So I just wanted to take precautionary steps for both of us to make right. sure that if either one of us contracted it, we would we be able be to fight like it that. off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yep. How was your weekend, Sosa? Oh, you know. Hold on. Let me going to bring in. Or should we go to Heather and then we'll come back to you? <laughs> I'm trying to bring in um, Michelle. Michelle. There's Michelle. There's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, I love the hair. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay, Michelle. He took the braids on and just got the color in your head. She uh, did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Pink and purple. Breast cancer and don't ask I Look, now purple Michelle and some purple eyeshadow going on a little bit. You know? uh, and purple look. <laughs> Michelle, this is Heather. Yeah. Hi, don't Heather. Know. Hi, nice so, to meet you. <laughs> we were going. Sorry, I'm late, you guys. Fine. We were going over week. We were going over weekends, and so we were getting into Heather and her weekend because you know, so so always got to think about what she did over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this weekend I actually started a new job as a supervisor. Oh. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Overnight shift, so it's been an adjustment. Yeah. Um, but it's really good pay. It's it's a blessing all in all. So, and then this, thank you guys so much for having me. This is oh, awesome. I finally um, got back into class last week and so got a pretty fun assignment, like an opportunity through going back and speaking up and 
yeah and now I'm here from it as well so <laughs> my weekend really was all leading up to this this is what I was right. excited for <laughs> <laughs> who's the cutie hi cutie. That's Theo. this is little Theo he is so hi, cute Leo. Theo he's grumpy today Theo Theo Fifi yeah uh, uh. oh <laughs> he's got an attitude I'm sorry <laughs> He like leave me he's alone. Don't talk to me. Still got an attitude. Shells, <laughs> how was your weekend, girl? Um, uh, my weekend Sorry. was cool. I looked at pictures of So So daughter going to homecoming this weekend. I know she looks so pretty. She did looking more and more like So uh, ever. She day. does. Um, what did I do this weekend? <laughs> Let's see. Friday. You, have, you having a dose of the soft sauce this week? I know. I did. I had a dose. I went out to. I went out to eat. Um, <laughs> I spent Me the weekend at my friend's house. Each other in person this past week. I went out. I went. I spent the weekend in my friend's house, Dog City. So I know. That was really I was so happy weekend. about that. So oh, yeah. actually, you did spend a night over there. I did spend the night over there, and then when I left so on you, Sunday morning, he was crying. Yeah, he was crying when I was leaving, and I was like, don't cry, puppy. Don't. It was so heartbreaking. So heartbreaking, because he was such a sweet little baby. But <laughs> other than that, yeah, and then I went out <laughs> last night to, to get some chicken and cheap drinks, and so that's it. That's always good. Chicken and cheap drinks. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. Never, can't go wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so so your time. Is, okay, yeah, I guess maybe Gabba want to tell you what I did. Hold on. <laughs> the puppy heard me talking about another puppy. Right, he got jealous. Right, he like what we talking about dogs and I did. <laughs> this about me. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> <laughs> Right, he said, don't talk about it. I can't wish you. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Um, so, Friday, I, oh, Friday, I went to karaoke. With, oh, yeah, that's um, right. With IMS family, you know. Yeah, so I'm jealous. We, we had, we had fun. It was so fun. Like, honestly, we, like, shut it down towards the end. So, we never really did something like this before, usually at the end. Whatever. So Lance is there. So we was like, Lance, like, hey. And I'm so mad we didn't even record like the best part of the night. And like we was like, hey, we was like in concert. We did uh Lil John snap your fingers. So we all was up there with <laughs> me, Lance. Ricky had left early. So it was me, Lance, Ebony, and um, yeah, I think it was just me, Lance. Who was yeah, you know, just me, Lance, and Ebony. So um oh and, and Matt and Matt, Matt Sass, that's right. So we went up there. We had I did see like, Matt Sass was, was there. Snap your fingers, right? So literally, we like do what we got. We like everybody get up out of your chairs. It's the last song of the night. We finna get it busting up in here and da da da. So we just the all of us snap your fingers and we just wrapped the whole thing. <laughs> we got people out of their feet. They came up to us. They dancing and snapping their fingers. And <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. We I was like that's like I was in the whole concert. But so yeah, we had a lot of fun doing that. And then um, Saturday, I went. I work. I didn't get in like two o'clock that morning though. And so, but Saturday, I had to go to work at like nine. I told him I was going to be late, like ten thirty. But I ended up going around nine. Took my daughter with me. So um, I got off. I left like two. She had homecoming, y'all. Saw her pictures. She was so pretty. My baby first she homecoming. Was. You know. Yeah. I remember nice. when she was a little little tight. I and know. Look at her. That got her. She's taller than me. She like five seven, and so <laughs> yeah, she's tall. Yeah, James wow. be that a minute too. He about to be taller yeah. than me. <laughs> That's crazy. Like James is taller than me, but y'all know that doesn't take a lot, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not that much. I mean, everybody. Right taller than you about right now. Seven. Girl. Don't you do that, so so. <laughs> <laughs> really, Michelle? <laughs> Since he was seven, Michelle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. He was at I'll first. Take that. Was oh my God, it's my mom. Hold up. I have to know how she tall you are. Then. I'm 4'11. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. That's how, now it that's makes sense. That's, that's, that's how tall my friend is um, going with to New York. 
And it's always like I always tell like, hey, when you're gonna wear some heels, you gotta wear like some six or to eight inch. Because when I wear heels with her, I feel like Nell and Addie. Only Nell was like short and chunky, but she's she's short and small. And I'm like tall. So it's like like this. It's like that eye cup you see on Murray Povich. And so, yes. whoop, so I'm like, people well, think Jaden is my people. brother all the time. It's crazy. Really? When you got friends that short well, you and you look their heels with them it just looks so weird like you walking with them that's not like i always tell somebody walk alongside of us or whatever <laughs> they can get kind of look like i'm a little taller she a little taller or something i don't know but sunday what did i do? sunday was yesterday right yeah it yes. was oh yeah no i do not just hung up with my daughter <laughs> um, she took me to some new chicken place um there what's the name of that chicken place Oh, she's not chicken, down here anymore. It's some. It's, it's they got some good chicken. They got some good wings. You had some chicken small, too, small girl. fries or chicken smalls or smells chicken or smock chicken some some kind of chicken. It was good though. Chicken. You just know so, it's chicken so so. I know it's chicken. It was. Um... <laughs> you remember that song? Guys, what state are you guys in? Uh, well, I'm in Illinois. They're in Atlanta. Yeah, we're yeah, in we're both in Georgia. Okay, yeah, I'm in Colorado. That's like we're all in Colorado. Chicago, but we say what state? <laughs> yeah, she's in Ohio. I want to come to Colorado so bad. I do it's too. Very here. I love it. It's so it's beautiful. So it I want to go to Aspen. Aspen. It hit. Yeah, Aspen. I hear is a lot less expensive than Denver. Denver hits. It's so expensive here. But really, it's yeah. It's yeah. It's not. But it's beautiful. Fun. But it's so worth it. We got the city, <laughs> and then like thirty minutes to an hour away, we got the mountains. Yeah. So yeah, it's nice. I like it. I had to take a trip to Ohio because basically everybody in my class is in Ohio, and like I be I want to do some projects with like all y'all. So I'm like I'm gonna have to drive out. I was telling Crystal the other day. I'm like I'm gonna have to drive out there and like you know meet up with like all y'all because all y'all, you, Travis, Crystal, Tanisha, like all y'all are in Ohio. And so I'm like, I got to take a trip. <laughs> See, everybody in my class was from Miami. Or oh, wow. there were a few from Ohio as well. But, of course, um, what's her name? Catherine is from Ohio. Ohio, yeah. I'm moving. And all y'all are like in different parts of Ohio, too. I don't even think it's all y'all in the same part of Ohio. <laughs> Where are you going, Cher? Oh, you're moving okay. from your current from my location. Fact, cause I forgot they was working on this gotcha. house over here, and all I hear is... <laughs> like, <laughs> I thought you meant you were packing up and moving. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> no. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I feel like, hold on, I just met you. Mind. Look, look, you can't leave me just yet, Cher. <laughs> we I just met. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Just checking. Phew. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get into the um, the topic topic uh, of today, I just want to um, hold on. I, I want to just say something really quick. I want to say two things. One is Bears won. <laughs> <laughs> the Bears this won again. Now I must say I missed the game. I, I I'm so mad I missed the game because I was I was driving I was I was moving stuff around and everything. So like I I missed the game and I'm so mad. But my mom called me like I didn't know Bears was playing today. I, right now she's like I'm like oh, she's like well they win. She I forget what she said the score was. It was like um was it 1917 and it was like a lot. They didn't have they had no time to come back. Um the Raiders I think they played. Raiders, right? And so they had mm -hmm. no time to come back because it was like four quarter, two minutes. And so she's like, well, you know, they won. So uh, 20 to 9. Thank you. Thank you, Raphia. Thank you. 20 to 9. Yeah. Hi, Raphia. Bears, Bears won. So that's always great news. Always great news on Monday morning talk. Whenever the Bears win. When they don't win, we ain't got to talk about it. So, uh, <laughs> well, um, the Falcons finally won yesterday against the Jets. Woo woo, 27 oh, yeah, to yeah. 20. Okay, what they won, they, they exactly they won at least that. we got one win. I didn't think we were gonna get any, I thought we were gonna be completely defeated this year, but we got our one win in. 
I'm still a Bears fan at heart, but I just had to throw that in there real quick. I mean, you know, the odds of winning at least one game should be good, you know. Exactly. So all the small okay, victories do, we have to celebrate. Make it a positive here, motivational Monday. Exactly. We have to celebrate all victories at this point. <laughs> hey Michelle, hugs and kisses, hugs and kisses. That's my homie, y'all. Been man, I met Raphael when I was young and dumb. Hey, I'm Marlon, most millionaire. Oh, it's M M T Live. Yes, Marlon, we miss you. We gotta have we, you on look. to talk about your new career too, Marlon. Right. First of all, is like his the thing. other side of the world now. What's going on? Uh, he's in North he's Dakota. He's in North Dakota. Cold, cold, cold. Come on now. Uh, he's in North Dakota. Thing. You back doing with the TV Happy show. Indigenous doing news Day production. <laughs> he's doing news production and everything. He's doing right. a doggone thing. I'm proud of you, Marlon. Don't forget about the so little proud. people now. I told him that. He said, I don't know, right, Michelle? Memories. Oh, y'all have yes. some memory memories. We're going to talk about those memories all camp. Oh, no. Not like that. Um, not like that. We oh, just... okay. <laughs> Raphael know how to throw a party. Like, you talk about a good party. Oh, okay. All right. And it was always sure. like no ignorance. Like, you know, that's how you know it's a good party when everybody have a good time all night. We we lit, we everything. So, <laughs> so yeah. Never y'all. You the truth, Marlon. You the truth. Right. You out here doing big <laughs> things and stuff, moving to whole new states and you stuff. You know, moving okay. on up, George Jefferson. Okay. So, so then another thing I want to say before we get into it. Oh, we got a <laughs> um, um, I want to give us just give a shout out to my neighbor Chris, Chris Martinez, because she just literally texted me and said, "Hey, I left cookies on your doorstep," and so she made my. I had like the best, the best um, neighbor. So she like made us cookies and Aww. left them on our doorstep. Are they sugar yeah. cookies? Yes, and she made the best cookies. So yes, they are sugar. They cookies. look like sugar cookies with frosting, they, like they do with the stone. They they yeah. sugar cookie good. That's what they well, <laughs> while we're talking about cookies, y'all know I'm a big pumpkin spice fan. I done found me some pumpkin spice. You know the fudge stripes, um, Toll House cookies. I guess they are with no uh -huh. Keebler, Keebler ones. They made some pumpkin spice one. Listen, I know y'all are not big pumpkin spice spice fans, but I'm about to pumpkin. advocate. The coffee, the cookie, I eat everything pumpkin spice. This is my season right now. But them cookies, <laughs> like, I, I, I love taste them so spice. good. See Heather, see Heather's well, on see, the, I'm the only one. Michelle is against it. Michelle, Michelle is like against it. Spice? But I, I you would have been spice. proud of me, Miss J. I got some, I got some munchkins from the, um, Dunkin' Donuts yesterday, and I said just give me a variety, and they threw two pumpkin ones in there. And I did you like them? I it was it was all right. It tasted like carrot cake. <laughs> It tastes like carrot cake, so it wasn't nasty. So good Amanda, morning, Amanda. Good morning. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Hey, Miss J. Hey, hey girlfriend. Hey. <laughs> hey, friend. <laughs> I love when yeah, my friends my support me. Epic, uh, single life. LL. I know. I know. Okay, Raphael. <laughs> Raphael is married oh, and, and, and settled now. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Look, all Raphael. that is behind him now. My, right. My mom mom still says, says, yes, mom. The candles are the best. The candles, the air fresheners, the soap, I buy it all, okay? That is me. Right, y'all. Y'all, congratulations <laughs> on y'all season. I like the colors, though. <laughs> <laughs> the colors. I love orange. orange and brown. I love orange. Orange is Look, so the orange is beautiful. I love it. Oh, Anything yeah, love pumpkin orange. or close to it, I'm with it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try that coffee. I need to find a oh, pumpkin patch to go mom. to. Go, I, like, I even I can, you know, I'm a Starbucks, everything. But I love, I like Dunkin' Donuts pumpkin spice coffee. I can't say I, I like they 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 get Dunkin' Donuts has some really good pumpkin spice coffee. So okay. they do. I work for it. I love Another the iced DD. coffee. I feel all driving by you look all cute. Hold on. Oh, I'm addicted to pumpkin spice. Say, Hold on. Now you got me typing in pumpkins. I'm me too, Heather. It's but bad. This is my season. It's really bad with me. With what? My and son I hates asked, it. No, the pumpkin. pumpkin spice. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's why I forgot. <laughs> I I acted like all I did was work this weekend. I actually got to enjoy myself with my children and take them to a pumpkin patch. 
which was oh, nice. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. I'm going to find me one. I'm going in the next two weeks. I have to before pumpkin season is over with. I'm not going to get a pumpkin to carve. I'm over the pumpkin carving stage. I don't I don't care for that, but I love to eat it. I love to be out there with the whole field full well, of Well, the only pumpkin patches I know about are all the way, you know, north and with the apple I know, apple with the apple orchards, yeah. And I'm sad because they used to have one down here um, in Palmetto, I think it was, but they closed it, Uncle Bob's. And I actually liked Uncle Bob, so I'm gonna have to find one. So anybody mind. watching who knows where pumpkin patches in Georgia, please let me know. Please appreciate please. it. We'll put that out there on the on the on the page. Yeah, they're gonna be like, go to Kroger, pick out a right. Get Take you home. Pack your <laughs> Crack it over the it's table. not the same. <laughs> is that what it's like in the city? Yeah, I do that in my backyard. It my is. Backyard. That's the closest oh, you'll get to it. Let them run around. Take a pumpkin. That's that'll be fun for them to be. It's almost like when you uh, on Easton, you had the eggs. You like a little yeah. some small little pumpkins and have the little kids run, run around the backyard and find little pumpkins or whatever. That'd be cute. Uh, that would be uh, cute. Maybe next year. I ain't got time this year. And um, I don't so, do haunted houses, so I'll pass on I that. I don't either. I don't do haunted houses. I don't houses. do haunted houses no more. I did I mean, one I a couple years ago when uh, 2 Chains had the whole big pink trap house thing going on. Mm -hmm. And so he had did like a partnership with another um, haunted house down here at 13 Stories. So you went through one, and that was the regular 13 Stories. The second one was the trap house version of it. I swear to y'all, it feel like somebody tased me. And all I know is I hit one of the actors and they were like, you can't hit us. And I was like, well, you can't shock me, whatever you did. So after that, I was like, I think I got my cue to not go to any more haunted houses. That that was the only sign that I needed. Let me tell you something. When I was a little girl, I had to be probably about eight-ish or something. Sorry. Mm -hmm. My friend's dog is... Missing Hi, her little mama. baby. Yeah, her mama left it. She <laughs> girl gone. She's like, pick me up. <laughs> right. But I was a haunted house at the carnival because you know back in the day carnivals was everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. I walked in that haunted house. Walked in with my mama. Okay, right back. One person did a ha, <laughs> and that was it. I ain't <laughs> you heard? I, I like, did the same thing. I went when I was in my early twenties. Went to that big haunted house that was uh, wherever it's at in Chicago. <laughs> not the not the jailhouse one, but the other big one that they do. It. That's the only one I know about is the jailhouse one. I it's, can't think of the other one. Yes, yeah, another one they do, um, but it's another big haunted house. I went one time with my friends, and I was so mad. I was so mad. I was crying because yeah. they was like, it's not gonna be scary. I might hear holding your hand, and we went through. And anybody who tells you that is lying to you. And we went through that haunted house, and when I tell you, I was I came out of there crying. I was like, I told you, I don't want to do no haunted house. <laughs> My mom took us one time because the local park district they had one at the water park, and so it was like a split in between the first half and second half. I walked out on the second half. I'm like, I'm not going through anymore. Y'all cannot force me. My friends try to call me a chicken. Call me what you want. I don't uh -huh. care. I don't care. I do not like right. haunted houses. Me neither. Like, I, I don't like friend. being scared. It makes me mad. Yeah, that's what I had this friend in high school. Every Well, it was probably like elementary school, junior high. Every time I would go stay the night with her, she would watch scary movies. And it was like. See, I don't do it. Nope. They just wanted to try me. And every time <laughs> I had something gave me. And I went yeah, home. I don't like horror movies either. I'm not a fan of that. I like the pumpkin spice, the cute little apple spice, but I don't want anything to do. Yeah, no. I can, I can only do certain types of, like, I never could do horror movies, and then I saw Salt. And then that's when I was like, okay, I can do gory, but I don't really like scary. Don't give me no coming out the bushes. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Cause that can happen to me, but ain't nobody finna make no contraption to pull my legs off. Like so, not nah, even like Squid Game, that new show that's out on Netflix. I heard about I, it. I watched like a tiny bit of an episode, and oh my gosh, the way the way my emotions are set up, <laughs> I cannot. I I don't think I could set through a whole episode because it's a lot of violence, like a lot of. Okay. I watched I it. Have, people love this show. I have watched yesterday. it. Me, my client, and her mom. So I turned to, you know, because her mom was going to be sitting there. And so we're, like, watching it. And I was, like, first when I saw, like, the people was talking about it on Facebook. And I'm, like, oh, maybe it's I'm, I'm 
Oh, why would I hear Squeeze Gang? I first thought it was like, oh, it probably be something like a Suicide Squad thing. So then I saw like the trailer and they had the red on and stuff. And I'm like, oh, so it's going to be like a money heist. Girl, uh-uh. I We got through an a episode and a half. I told one of my clients that I said, I ain't watching this no more. It was you don't like Money Heist? I love Money Heist. No, I'm talking about Squeak Game. Oh, it's yeah, not, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's the first episode. It's just like, what? Like, yeah, what? my cousin, he had me watching that yesterday. I watched it yesterday and I was like, mm, this is not going to work for me. That first episode alone is a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, it's... Uh, but we're okay, so deep in everybody the say. violent stuff that mm -hmm. a lot of people like watch it like it's nothing like my whole mom to it. yeah and to me no i walk i walked in she was watching like the last of the very last episode and so that's all i've seen and it was already like I, no i don't want to go back to the beginning i don't want to no yeah i would have anxiety mm -hmm. the whole way through <laughs> Now, I will do a shameless plug really quickly. I did watch um, Halloween Kills. It comes out this Friday. It's the new Michael Myers movie. And mm -hmm. I just interviewed Omar J. Dorsey from it. And honestly, it was not as bad as I expected it to be. It started off a little gory, but it was not as bad by the end of the movie. So that one actually is a good one. It comes out this Friday if y'all want to go. I ain't watching no Michael bad. Myers, no Freddy's, nobody. <laughs> Mom said hi behind the chainsaw. Oh, you know, like a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, made on Netflix is good. I think Michelle watched Made. I, yeah, Michelle, Michelle was made. watching it. I've heard that's yeah. good too. I was gonna watch it last night so we can talk about it, but then I forgot I had to watch my housewives because um I had to catch up on Real Housewives of Potomac. Yes. And so, I have not watched the reunion yet. No reunion isn't on yet. Oh, it's, it's next week. Up. So, okay. Oh, yeah, because they're still at the house. They're still on vacation. Really, yeah, they're still at the house, and I really hope somebody beat Candace up again, because apparently she didn't learn her lesson from last year. So, I'm sorry. I'm going to say that out loud, because she, <laughs> her mouth is so much. I like Candace, but she's really pushing it I now. do not. I literally fast forward. She's her, pushing her, her it. Part. I fast forward her She's part. pushing she's it with home. me. She's trying to make she's... herself so relevant, she can stay on the show, that she's just being dumb. Because Unfortunately, I think that's her as an individual. Yeah, huh? I said. Unfortunately, I think that's who Candace is as a person. It probably and is. I and I think it, and I think that she still has not learned her lesson, and that's why she got beat up last season because of her mm -hmm. mouth. And then she tries to play victim. Try to press charges because you exactly you got beat up on TV. She but throws like rocks and hides her hand. You broke a glass in her face. Right. And Monique should have stayed on the show. Candace should have left. But just like when she swung that knife in here and um. What's my jig face? And this, nobody said nothing to her about yeah. swinging a butter knife in Ashley's face. But Monique had got all the trauma because she beat up. She beat her up. But yep. Candace kicked it off, and so I usually you know, like Candace. Can't overall, I like what Candace does. But when she starts getting to that point, she starts getting very disrespectful. It's like okay, and she keep, the way she keeps talking about Mia's mom, that's what I don't like. Don't talk about that lady's mom. Like if we're gonna argue and we're gonna insult each other. Parents and kids are off the table. Now, mm -hmm. when you cross that line, then it's okay. I it's, don't like her. Okay. She's boring. She's boring outside of her trying when, when she's not with the ladies. I don't like her at home. I, fast I think she's still trying family. to figure herself out as an individual. That's part of her Yeah, problems. well, she better figure out before she lose her husband. This is Men have to sit here like... Y'all don't like Like who? Girl, that's Sorry, guys. Yeah. Real Housewives of Potomac. That's a deep. That's a deep show, right there. <laughs> no, Michelle. They said you've watched Made. I watched. Um, I'm on like episode three or four. I saw the oh, movie. movie. So good. Mm, it's a it's a limited sure. series. You know, it's it was not what I expected. Okay. Um, I thought it was going to be. I mean, I knew what the gist of it was, but um. When I started watching it, it wasn't what I expected. And it really, what I'm really enjoying about it is that it's um, opening my eyes to a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Um, so just to give a brief synopsis, if anybody has um, has not heard of me, so it's about a girl who leaves her boyfriend and it's an abusive relationship. And so mm. just um, like from the first episode, 
it's just like how she's in denial of being abused because he's emotionally abusing her and um just like that I was just I was texting Sophia and Jordan and saying like I never really thought about how that it that is domestic violence um so and then just how he you know controlled her and it's just like it's nice how they give flashbacks so it's not just the story and then they'll give flashbacks to see how she you know got to a certain point or why she's thinking a certain way um and just just the things that we go through and how people pull you and that back and forth so it's a it's a lot it's not your typical you know somebody burning dead you know type of <laughs> domestic violence but it's probably the most common type you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. of, of situation mm-hmm. that you know people are faced with so it's really opening my eyes and just everything that she's going through um to reclaim her life you know she went from being you know like this woman who had dreams and aspirations to the shell of a person and like it literally can happen just like that so it was it's it's good so if y'all get a chance watch it yeah it's a limited you know series. what's so crazy is that i before i watched squid games yesterday made like i didn't mean to click it but it was stuck it was coming on i'm like why is it going like i didn't mean to click this like and then maybe <laughs> you, if you would have talked about it beforehand because it was like starting to play and i'm like why is he like at the root cool little thingy in yeah. my spine so i'm like why is it not and so if you would have said like, oh, maze is this, this, I would have just let it play. But I'm thinking it's just some little boring movie about a maid, you know? And so <laughs> That's what I thought too. That's why I passed it over. <laughs> yeah, that's what I had thought too at first until I found out that it was about, you know, um, abuse. And then when I started watching the first episode, I would, I ain't gonna even lie y'all, forgive me for whoever's, you know, I got mad because I'm like, this ain't even hen her. Like, what is this? What is this? You know what I'm saying? I thought I was gonna see her get choked out. But then you realize, <laughs> I yeah. promise the goodness. That's what I was thinking because you know you hear domestic violence that is or abuse or relationship. Think about physical only. That's, That's exactly what, we didn't have to what you think about. about before on the text when I was saying like it's not it's so much more it's abusive it's psychological it's spiritual it's financial it's so much more to abuse than than physical and sometimes we can be abusive and not even know that we are being abusive. Not even know we're being abusive. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's so much to abuse, and that's why I, I, why I have had her on here too. So now we can get into the topic. So I'm glad y'all talked about maids and domestic violence because that's the way it really meant the topic. So Heather, um, <laughs> I know you're on here. You can um, to share your story. You know, tell us like about you and you know basically your who you are and what you went through and how you got out of it. Yeah. Um, so actually, it's insane that that's what maids is about because that's why I stayed so long because I was like I'm not I'm I'm gonna try not to get emotional but I'm a very I'm a very emotional person so it might not we cry all the time we're here okay, together okay, good, good. <laughs> yeah um yeah let me start I guess with who I am before I get into the abuse because before I before I, I don't want to say fell victim, but that's what happened. I fell victim because I'm a survivor now. Okay. I'm not a victim, yes. but I, before I fell victim, um, you want to sit down? I was a woman with dreams. I, I did experience uh, sexual abuse as a child that no one knew about. I was told pretty much to stay silent um, because it could be pretty much ruin reputations. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my son in his car seat. Um, here, one moment, I'm gonna run upstairs. <laughs> Dumb thing. <laughs> so have you have a baby. No, but- well, I personally people- think, I was gonna say, I personally think a lot of people, um, they try to downplay mental abuse or, you know, even verbal abuse. I think that sticks with people a little bit more and affects them harder than actual physical abuse because mentally you take over somebody's mind, which controls the rest of their body. Like I was in a relationship where it started that way and then it turned into the physical. And, you know, when it's it's like that, it's just like when you have a combination of both, it's like you feel like you have no outlet. You're trying to figure stuff out. And it's just like you, you're embarrassed to tell people around you what's going on. You're trying to, you know, remain strong and fight through it. And then 
it just finally gets to a point, hopefully, that you just like forget it. I just want to get out of this. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. I don't want this being my story anymore. Like, I know I'm better than this, but it's also those resources. Who do you turn to? Who can right. you turn to? Who's right. going to help you get out of this situation? And then having to rebuild yourself after that, like that happened to me, I think over like 10 years ago, but it still affects me to this day. Like that is, it sticks with you for a very long time. I don't think you ever get over it. It's the trauma from that. So but, you know, you just have to rebuild yourself as best as you can. Like, there's a lot of women who walk around um, and the men, too. It's not let's not even just say it's women. It's men, too, who are verbally and physically abused. And so when you're in those type of situations, you just really have to know who you can turn to for support. Yes. Yes. And that sorry. <laughs> I had to get away. Um, but, yeah, that's like okay. through everything like I think growing up because I was silenced about my like sexual abuse I was taught to like protect my abuser I think it's called Stockholm mm. syndrome mm-hmm. where you get attached and you like you put these stories in your head and like social media was just kind of becoming a thing whenever I met my ex-husband and I am from a small white town <laughs> um, my ex-husband is a dark-skinned man um, it's a town of 1200 people racist let's just be direct with it um, so I was protective of him in every way like I didn't want to tell my story and have anyone use that to justify like their race because like he's a good man he he did he had a good heart and like I hate that I still like do this with people I still protect people but mm-hmm he was abused growing up and he went through stuff. And so the things that he was saying to me, it was things that his mother and his father would say to him. And so like, I recognized the signs and I like made excuses for it the whole time. So I was like, no, like if I just love him harder, he's gonna, he'll, he'll heal. He'll be better to me. And I dated him on and off for about four years um, in college. I got pregnant with my firstborn um, while he and I were broken up and he calls me one day out of the blue. We met at one college and in my hometown. There's like co- two colleges, 15 minutes from each other. So we met at this college over here and then he calls me one day and I'm attending the other college at this point. I haven't posted about it. No one knows where I'm going. to school. And he tells me, Hey, I'm going to school with you again. And I was like, oh, I don't go there anymore. And he's like, no, I'm going to ICC with you. And I was just so in love with him that it didn't click to me. I was like, how the fuck do you know where I'm going to school when I haven't told anyone? Um, I was like, okay. I had just found out I was pregnant. I told him, I'll pick you up in the airport, but you have to go with me to get an abortion. And he, I was raised Catholic. He was like, were you pregnant way by him or? No, no. By someone. Y'all were broken up. Okay. Yeah. And he was like, no, that's not you. You were raised Catholic. Don't do that. Um, years down the road, he admitted that he only wanted me to keep on to like trap me to make it so that I couldn't move forward with my life. Mm. But at that time, I, I mean, and I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. Like my first one is such a blessing to me and he's taught me so many things and made me a better person, a better mom. Mm. But yeah, he did that. And then the whole time he was by my side, but he was cheating on me the whole time. And I found out like at ready to give birth to my son and I forgave him because he was there for me while I was pregnant with another baby. So yeah, I forgave him and we made a trip up in Kansas. We were living in Kansas at the time. We took a trip out here and got married because I was raised Catholic and my my aunts and my uncles were all like, you need to be married. You have cousins that look up to you. Um, You know, you can't have a child out of wedlock. Um, So we got married. And then a week later, he asked me for an open relationship. Um, You got married? Yeah, literally a week later. Ripped up our marriage license, lit it on fire. Um, I agreed. Because I was like, you know what, let's, let's lay down the rules. And we went through all the rules and we made a list. And then 
literally the first girl he talked to like broke everything that we said with the list and like mind you now that I'm 28 years old like it's been seven years I would never I'm sorry but that's just not me I have friends who are poly and stuff but like I went against so much of myself to try to keep a man mm-hmm. and like it's taken me so long to recognize that but like I just wanted I just wanted to I wanted my family to be proud of me I wanted to be a role model and I wish like for anyone out there who's listening who's like in a position anywhere similar to mine you are valid without a man you are valid without a woman you are valid without a partner you can be a single parent and be one of the best people still like you don't need a partner to be a good person and that's what I had in my head I needed him and so after that happened with the open relationship whatever I told him you know I want to let's let's get an annulment let's we don't even have to get a divorce. It's already soon enough. We can just cancel all of this essentially. And that's whenever he got me pregnant with my daughter. And I mean, whenever I look back, like I cut myself during that pregnancy. He mm. cheated on me the whole pregnancy. I was working like a night shift job and he would like forget about me and I would have to walk home in the middle of the night, like dark. It was just all of it was, I don't know why. All my life, I've tried so hard to like the manner why I accepted the the treatment been given, I guess. And yeah, so I was in that for I had my daughter. He moved us from my hometown in Kansas, two hours away, to all the way to his home city in Washington State. So there's like a cycle of abuse, and it literally like textbook cycle of abuse, isolation, isolation, moving you away, all of it. And so then we got to Washington state and he had such, big, I felt like, so whenever I, we were both big dreamers. I wanted to do, acting. eventually I got into like marketing and stuff. He was so talented with tech. He was doing the same type of thing, but I feel like he Ursula would me is what I <laughs> say I would call it he like took my voice everything I was passionate about suddenly it became his suddenly I was just a mom I needed to focus on the kids and he could do all of the things and chase his dreams and just there was so much that happened in that relationship that eventually in Washington State um, we started doing marketing for a church and I don't know why I thank God every day for this, but he was honest with the pastor about like his infidelity towards me and how he's speaking to me and stuff. And that's what it was. I say he never put hands on me. It doesn't matter if you're married. If you say no, it's still not okay. And it took me a long time to accept that. And I still like feel weird saying that out loud because like, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't want to think that's my, that's my daughter. Like, I don't want to think of him as a bad person, but he did have like, he is a bad person. You said what? He is a bad person. Thank you. Anybody who feel like they can put somebody down, treat somebody the way they treat it and have no remorse, disregard you, disrespect you, your children. Basically, he's a bad person. I need a horrible person. I needed to, I still, like, I still try to, like, even my, my family, like, I still try to, like, be like, oh, no, they were just doing the best they could. They didn't know, like, no, they're, it it does suck. Like, whenever you're a good person, you always, you always want to see the best in people. But yeah, that's what he, he put me through a lot and he made me question myself. He made me question my dreams, everything that I worked so hard for. It all became his and I had to start over. I eventually, I, that pastor sent my kids and I, um, home. They, he bought us plane tickets. I got to go back to Kansas. I finished my associate's degree. Unfortunately, this whole time, my ex-husband followed me from Washington. Mm-hmm. and more abuse happened there and then finally I had a friend out here she was like hey 
I have an extra room. You can move out here with your kids and we'll figure it out. We'll make it work. And so I, her boyfriend's mom lived close by and she was getting ready to go to Colorado for the weekend. And I was packing all my things and I left. And it was literally up until that last moment that he was stalking me. And then I came out here and I found out that it was an extra room. It was just a couch sectional for us. <laughs> which I, I would have made it work. I was fine with it until I woke up one morning to hear and I look over and there's her ex-boyfriend now but it was at the time doing blow on the countertop and I was like I got my babies right here sleeping in my arm up and they could have seen that right. thank god but I confided in my ex-husband my ex-husband called CPS on me and so I was wow. yeah he came here to Colorado he found us again and then he called yes on me because I was like, you can't stay with us. And so, yeah, this caseworker, and this is how my brain is set up. Okay, because I am from like a small white town and I work very, very hard to combat the prejudices that I was raised with. And I think it's really important for me to, it, whenever you are raised, what? you are raised with prejudices. I don't care what anyone says. Like, it's how you're raised. It's what you're around. It's how people, white people, at least the white people I was around think. And so I work very hard, especially my ex-husband. I think it was his great, great, great uncle was the co-founder of Sacramento's Black Panther Party. And so he taught me so much. Like, I have so much love for him and his family because they made me a better person. I would not be the woman I am today it wasn't for the that they taught me. And so my caseworker, the CPS caseworker, I, no one could tell me anything. I defended my ex-husband until the day that he is stalking you. It was a, the caseworker was also a black man. And I think God knew, like, if I didn't hear from a black man, like the white man telling me this, or why would, I would not have listened. I still would have been like, you don't understand. Like he's just been through a lot. And so to have another like say that to me, like he's abusing you. This is abuse. This is not okay. It doesn't matter for that. He's not allowed to treat you like this. He told me like he's been stopping you. And he really like pointed it out to me. And I was like, okay, I have to accept this now. And that caseworker got us into a safe house and that's where my journey here has begun. Um, I've been in and out of like so many safe houses since I've been here. I think five or six. Um, there were times that he he had found us, and then there are times that I rushed into a relationship. Like that's what this has been my journey here is realizing my worth and like realizing I be alone. <laughs> um, but that's since being out here, um, I've never, I have never admitted that. So um, when I was in that first safe house, I got it for the first time in my life. And yeah, I'm what? like the dating app. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And um, I met a guy. And I had talked about how um, I was thinking about going to the club and stripping and I just needed someone to watch my kids because I was just trying to be able to pay rent. And I thought that would be the best option. My ex-husband, in the last months that we were together, he got a job at a male strip club in Washington State. And that's where like the beginning of the end all clicked for me where it finally was ending for me but I don't know like I've always because of my because of my stuff I've always been out out there I guess I've always been uh I've always thought that I had to give a man for him to want me I guess and so whenever it came to about dancing at the club I was like oh I can 
you know, dance and get money, whatever. So this guy was like, yeah, he was all for it and watched my kids and convinced me to dance and go and get a sugar daddy. And then from there, um, <laughs> he sent me on calls. And at one point, um, it was like I was meeting with like a potential sugar daddy in Vegas where it's legal. So he held me hostage for like three days and fed me like twice in those days. My kids were with, I had a nanny the whole time. So like, but I still like, I don't, I look back and I'm like, I, was away from my kids so much yeah I threw money at the situation and I had some money to throw at it but it I wasn't like I wasn't a good mom I, wasn't that I am today and that like I've always wanted to be but so my kids were with their nanny and yeah I, I was in Vegas and I was there for three days he me twice I was like begging him to leave I took pictures of so much because he had like a meth pipe, a gated community in the kitchen and smoking meth, going out to rake his yard at like 3 a.m. And I called my my ex and he told me to figure it out. Mm. <laughs> he said, you're on your own with this one pretty much. And I reached out to a friend who uh, is an attorney <laughs> and I was like this is mad embarrassing but I don't know what else to do and I'm scared and I told him and he's like, I'm sorry Heather you're in baby he's like they, if you call the cops they'll tell you like did you go there willingly we can't help you and so finally eventually like I got a credit card and I bought myself a ticket and got out of there but it was like that's whenever I was like, yeah, I off. And I finally did. Um, I haven't talked to him since then, but he had an ex who, or a girl, the girl, I guess, reached out to me on Instagram. He still, he did the same thing with her. And his father was a pimp. So I assume it's just like, he, he, I, he saw it. Like I was a, of an easy victim I, and I hate to say it now cause I'm like, uh, never again. But, and, and I'm still like, well, I can't believe I just said that out loud. But shocked. Mm -hmm. I've never, I've never, I, I just recently went through um, a 12 week pro through a pro uh, company called Rescue America. And, I mean, in the club, like, women taught me a lot about boundaries, surprisingly. That was the first place I learned about boundaries. Um, and taught me a lot about, like, standing up for myself and, like, spirituality. Not things you expect to learn in a strip club. But, um, so, like, part of me still... My heart is like there, I guess, with them. Like, but I also am not okay with like TikTok and stuff, like how they glamorize things and like make like stripping and everything is just crazy. And like, oh, if I can't get another job. I'm stripping. Like, no, the labor and everything, the toll it takes on you, not something you can just like, oh, I'm going to pick up one day. Like, it's, you have to really put some thought into it. And like, whenever, sorry, I'm getting off topic. So I was thinking about that. And I guess with my like Catholic shame, everything I was raised with, I'm like, it's such, here, one moment, I'm sorry. But one thing I, when I went through um, 
being in an abusive relationship. And my, my relationship was physically abusive, verbally abusive, emotionally abusive, spiritually abusive, somewhat financially abusive. It was always when I had a job interview. I didn't have a car, you know, I didn't have my license then. I was like, maybe like 19 or whatever, 20. And um, he would have to take me to the end of my interview or whatever. And so when it was time for my interview, he would pick a fight with me because it just seemed like I always got a job. And so it always seemed like he was, he had trouble getting a job or he would get sick so he couldn't get a job. And it seemed like he would get jealous of the fact that I was going to get a job. And um, so he would like pick a fight with me or it'd be like when he gets sick or whatever, I take care of him. I'd be with him the whole time and I have asthma. So if I have an asthma, asthma attack, it was just like he would get mad at me and pick fight me because I got to go. He would want to fight me because I wanted to go. I had to go to the hospital, you know, so he want to take me to the hospital. He didn't want to waste his time. It was it wasn't part of his day to take me to the hospital. But when he was in the hospital, I would be with him. And then when he get better, we get in a fight. You know, he just it was just disregard the whole thing of me taking care of him and he would, he would be my ride to church on Sundays. Sometimes he wouldn't take me to church. He would use that against me, like, because he knew that that was the only way I can get to church was through him. So it was like he would pick a fight or he would leave so I couldn't get to church. And it got to the point where it was, I used to always call the police, but uh, I would never press charges. He would go to jail for like 24 hours because there's no bond for domestic violence. And then when he get out, I, I, would, I wouldn't press charges. So it was one point where um the state attorney was like okay you're not pressing charges but we're going to go ahead and press and he's going to have to do anger management or whatever you know he got to do anger management he got, because i know you don't want to press charges but we got to have something done so he started anger management he didn't finish and so i stayed with him and people of the police number they always ask like why you stay with him and i'd be like i had nowhere else to go i didn't want to go to that shelter with my kids my girls was like one and two almost about yeah about one or two and so it got where it got when it got really bad to um it was times where it got bad and i remember um we got in a fight and i think he hit me i don't know if he need me in my face or something where i know i just i must have passed out because when i woke up he was gone and my daughters were standing over me crying and so um i called the police and I remember the fireman came. My nose was bleeding, and the fireman came and he had asked me like, "Why are you still here? Why are you?" I think he was a paramedic. He's like, "Why are you still here? Why you know why are you standing?" I'm like, "Because I don't have nowhere else to go and I'm in my kids." And he was like, "And this is it." Always stuck with me when he was like, "Well, you know, if you leave now with your kids being so small, they won't remember none of this. But if you stay and as they get older, they're going to continue to remember this." And so I used to have a journal and I used to write in this, my journal. My journal was all, my whole journal was about him and my relationship and just like how everything. And I remember one time when I um, found my journal, I see that he must have found my journal and he just was like writing it, like be this and like defending himself in my journal. Like on every page, he wrote something on what I was writing, defending himself, like cussing me out in my own journal. And um, he's destroyed my stuff. I, I had, I was starting a poetry book. So I had this notebook with all these poems in it because I wanted to put it together for a book. And I still, I don't know what happened to that book. I know he destroyed it. And um, it got to where like, I used to like pray, pray my way out. And it, so the way I left was basically when I found a girl in the house and I had fought her. And then I fought him, he was trying to fight me. He, he was trying to fight me because I fought her and I fought both of them. And so it's so and at that point I was just like, I okay, this is done. I gotta go. I gotta find somewhere to go because I can't stay here because my daughters are still seeing they keep seeing all this stuff. You know, it was one time we fought and I'm running to the neighbor's house knocking on the door. Me and my kids asking the neighbors to like open the door so I can call the police, you know, because he kicked my daughter in her stomach and she was like two, you know, and so it got real bad where I was like hiding from my not hiding from them but when i went somewhere i have piles of makeup on my face trying to hide like and making excuses i remember one time i was on the phone with my sister just after he kneed me in my nose and i still have that dent on my nose 
And I was told my I was on the phone with my sister, and I tried to act like I accidentally hit my nose while I was on the phone with her, so she could think that, that this happened from when I hit my nose while I was on the phone with her. And one time when I went to um, my cousin's house, and my uncle and I was there, and he was like, "You got so much makeup, my cousin. Why you got so much makeup on your face?" So I had a black eye. And first I was at work, and my my, this, my best friend at the time she saw, it, she was like, "What happened to your eyes?" So I made an excuse. I can't even remember what I said, and um, she was like. Don't tell me he did that. And I was like, no, you know, I'm making excuses for him. I was making excuses because I didn't want them to know that I was getting abused at home. They knew, but I didn't want them to know how bad it was. And so it, it went that point of where he had a girl in the house and I had to fight her and him, my kids, seeing the dress and I was just like, I got to go. I never said it was my fault. That's one thing I knew. I knew it wasn't my fault. I grew up with abuse being in my family. And I used to always say, I ain't never gonna let no man hit me, da da da. And I remember he even said, so, uh, Sophia, the day if I, ever gotta, if I ever feel like I gotta put my hands on you, it's gonna be the day that I leave you. I will never put my hands on you. But I heard previously before that his, his he was abusive to his ex-girlfriend. And this is when I was dating him at the time and I found out that he was dating her at the same time, whatever, and we was going back and forth. So I had asked her, I'm like, let me hear from the horse's mouth. Like I'm hearing all these this um, rumors about him breaking her mom's windows and all this stuff, and she literally lives across the sidewalk from me. And um, I asked her, and she told me no. So I'm like, well, she said no. He must didn't, you know, he must not be like that. So I'm like, he really, she just really didn't like me, so she didn't care if he it happened to me or not. And so then I remember I asked his mom. I was like, well, why would you tell me of this about your son? Like why? Um, I was like, why, why wouldn't you tell me this about your son? Why wouldn't you let me know that your son is abusive, that your son is like this? And she was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll tell next, I'm sorry. You know, I don't know. Next time I know, I'll tell, I'll tell you next time uh, to the next girl or whatever. I told the next girls, even though I didn't, even the girl that I found in the house, like I even told her, I was like, look, you think you want this? And she was a young, she was a minor. He was like 22. She was like 15. And I called the police and everything. You know, they didn't take him to jail. They made him leave and they made her leave and leave him together. But um, she, I told her, I said, look, this, you think you want this, but you, this is not what you want. This, he's, he's not who you think he is, but I, I'm trying to tell you so that I won't have that blood on my hands. But she was just, she was crazy too. So they fit together. And so, um, so his next girlfriend, I knew her. We were cool, or whatever. we worked together, and I had asked her about if she found out about the ex girlfriend or whatever. Because that time he was trying to like he was already abusive to her, and they weren't even together for probably like two or three months. And I kept telling her like, "Why are you staying with him? Like you have no kids by him. He's in your place. Like you don't need to be with him. Why are you still with him?" And it's not people wonder like, "Why do they stay?" It's not. It becomes a mental thing. It's like mentally you want them to get right. Mentally. You hope that it happens because you love them. You think you love them so much. And so mentally, you want it to be right. So it's not so easy to leave. Some people are just strong. And after that first time, they can just go. But when you're in situations where you really don't have nowhere to go to, and it's like, then too, you think you love this person. Then you think you want to do it for the kids. When you, well, the whole time, you're really hurting your kids more. It's not, it's not as easy as people think, but I just thank God that I got out. I think God Jordan got out. I, got, I think God had to get out before we could end up like so, a lot of the other women and some men that did not get out that are six feet under right now. So it's, it gets bad and we got to know that it's not us. The people are narcissists. They don't care if it hurts. If they only care if it hurts them. And we have to know that it's, it wasn't your fault, Heather. You don't have to take up for him. You don't have to defend him. He's a horrible person. And until he gets real help, and sometimes it's narcissists can't, it would not get help. They can't be helped. He's that always going to be a horrible person. I never knew what a narcissist was until like I started looking up like in, I don't, I, there's no diagnosis for this, but to me, I'm like, he was a narcissistic sociopath. The things that he would say, he would do, how he just didn't care. And I'm realizing like, what my ex, the ex that I dated in between him and my youngest son's father, what he did was he, it's called Romeo. He Romeoed me. So yeah. he fooled into thinking we're in love and this. And like, he literally told me because I was sexually abused by my oldest brother growing up. That's another thing that I've never said out loud. 
Um, I was sexually abused by my oldest brother growing up. And my the dude that Romeo'd me told me, you're used to laying on your back and taking it. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. And he used everything he could to like, oh, you're going to go get money. Oh, it's okay. You're going to come home, bring it back to daddy. You know, like really now I'm like, I sit back and I'm like, that's fucking disgusting. Okay. But in that moment, I just wanted a partner. I just wanted family because, because of what happened to me as a child, I don't feel like my family is safe. I don't feel like that's, and it sucks because through my relationships, that's been my biggest downfall is dating. Um, through my relationships, I've had to lean on my family in ways that like I never wanted to because I didn't trust them. They didn't keep me safe. How could I ever keep trust them to keep my children safe? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like the I've I'm very open. Um, I'm an empathetic person. And they say yeah. that empaths attract narcissists. Mm -hmm. And like a couple of years ago, whenever I started hearing that, I decided I was like, I am retiring from being an empath. Like I do not <laughs> with that anymore. It's not my reality. Um, and yeah, like the biggest thing that I think has saved me through, because I'm even just now, like my youngest son's father and I, I mean, I've been missing from class for like almost a month. I was wondering, I wanted to ask Catherine what happened to you, but I was like, that's her business. And so I don't want to like, yeah, no, I, I, I thought maybe you just dropped. And so, no, I, I love like what, whatever's going on in the class, they're amazing. Like I, there, I feel so passionate and like I belong there, but my youngest son's father, um, I believe he has undiagnosed bipolar disorder. Um, he, from the beginning, he knew about my dancing. Whenever he and I first met, I was a dancer. I, I, I was a stripper. I was a sex worker. Um, and I was honest with him about that. But one night he took my kids and I to like the casino, got us a big suit. We all stayed up there. And that was the night he told me that he loved me and that he wanted a future with me. And so I was like, okay, if you're going to love me, I have to be like 100% with you. And then you can choose to like walk away at this point or move forward with me. And so I told him about the other part of the sex work, the sugar daddies, all that. And he acted like he could handle it. He acted like it didn't bother him. He understood. And then a couple months went by and completely switched up it started with um me getting a porch thrown at me uh, across the hotel room and that was the first time I went to a safe house in our relationship um but that's the thing like how you said you didn't you you didn't want to go to the like you don't want to go to a shelter with your kids it's not pleasant that time in that shelter it was worse than like at least I, I felt worse than being in the relationship there was someone doing like I think it was like crack or meth or something, smoking smoking it in the bathroom. Another girl was like strung out on pills that we had to go get her baby out of her that was crying for literally hours. Turns out she passed out on the floor. Police getting called there every night. Like this is a safe shelter. That's what it's called. This is supposed to be a safe shelter. And it's such a reality for women and people trying to get out of abusive situations. It's not as easy as like, it's almost like you want to go back. Yeah. Like, and that's what, like being there in that shelter, I got into an apartment within like, I think two weeks or a month. And I was like working a real job, a vanilla job, as we call it. Um, I was, I was working at a nursing home and I was like, I was doing everything right. I thought, and it still wasn't enough. And then I got pregnant. And once I got pregnant, he started, he went to a job. He does HVAC. And he's tried so hard. Um, he's first generation. And I know that his parents did what they knew. They did the very best they could. And they worked a lot. And 
So that's what he saw. And then whenever it came to his mental health, they just called him a bad kid. They didn't register that there was mental, like they, they needed to take his mental health seriously. Like there was something going on there. And so, yeah, he's still as a mass man acting the same way. And like, here I am still in my head making excuses for it. Um, and it happens, it becomes it's a pattern if you don't stop it. Yeah. Because I know a lot of women that go from one abusive relationship to another abusive relationship. But you got to make, when I, after I left uh, my abusive relationship, I said, I would never, ever let another man talk to me crazy or argue with me in front of my kids. My kids would never hear me argue. So when I got with my youngest, so I was single, I stayed single for like four years. I didn't get in a relationship. I was dating here and there, but I needed to find me. I needed to build, be able to build back trust before, you know, and so I stayed single for like four years. And then I had um, met my daughter, my youngest daughter, father, and he was emotionally abusive, I say, because they say cheating is a form of emotional abuse. So he was cheating. And um, but what one thing he didn't do was he didn't argue with me in front of my kids. He, uh, we, if we had a, a disagreement or whatever, we would take it in the room and we would, you know, say, discuss it there. Maybe we got a little argument, but it was never loud. I don't know if my kids even knew we ever argued because I made sure, like, you're not going to disrespect me in front of my kids. My kids are not going to grow up thinking that this is okay. They've seen it a lot. And then as they start to get older, unfortunately, they've seen it, like, with their dad and his other girlfriends, you know? So he didn't stop. And he didn't stop doing it in front of them. So my oldest two, like, they saw it still. But it's like, you got to be able to give yourself a break and get to know you again. And I mean, eventually you never, I mean, the relationships I had after that, like they weren't, they were all, all just emotion, like emotional. And one of them was verbal, but I got out of it, you know, and um, but a lot of them was like psychological. Like you, they, you know, you allow the cheating, you allow, you know what I'm saying, the manipulation. You know, and it starts to become like this it becomes normal. It starts to become normal to you in your relationship. All your relationships seem like it's a different person, different upbringing, but behavior is the same. And it becomes like, okay, well, this, maybe this is just how it is. Maybe this is just how it's supposed to be because it just seems like you, would, you haven't met somebody that's behavior is different. And we start to accept it. And we got to know in the, in the beginning that this is not right. We, we don't have to go through it. We don't have to say, we don't have to say, yes, I'll date you again. We don't have to say, yes, I'll be in a relationship with you. We don't have to say, yes, I'll lay down with you. We have to be strong. And that's one thing that women, especially, and it's a lot of men too, but it's more women, especially that are, we are, we're, because society makes us think that we are supposed to be in a relationship. We supposed to be married. We supposed to be in a family. We start to love so fast because we want to have that life that society tells we got to have, but we don't. Mm -hmm. that's and that's the part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was my issue. I think that's part of the reason why I stayed um, in my situation. Luckily, it was only for three months that I stayed in that situation, but um, there were so many that led up to that final one um pushing shoving hitting the verbal abuse um mental abuse it, it was just you know a conglomerate of everything um and so the last and final straw for me was when it happened in front of Jaden. um my keys were thrown out of the window literally the window was closed he threw my keys and they went through the window it was snowing outside or raining i can't remember but it was dark it was nighttime i couldn't go outside and find my car keys so guess what he was trying to stop me from going to work um luckily i had an extra pair of keys so i was able to call my mom and i could get the spare key from her she lived three blocks away from me and all this was going on and she never knew it never because at that point I was embarrassed. I didn't want to tell my family these mm -hmm. things. And then it was also like, well, I have to, you know, stay here for my son. And I want my son to see, you know, mom being in a happy relationship. Well, really, I was not happy. Mm -hmm. I was far from happy. Um, and then that last time I started beginning slowly, sneakily moving stuff out of the house. 
And I was moving stuff back into my mom's house and he was popping up at my mom's house. He popped up at a friend's house that I went and started staying at. Um, and I actually went to the police to press charges for him being a stalker. They would not allow me to press charges the first day. Literally the next day, I'm leaving outside at six o'clock in the morning to go to work. I went to my back passenger door to find uh, my shoes for work. And as I stood up, I kid you not, he was standing right there. And I just started screaming at the top of my lungs. And people were coming out of their house because they didn't know what was going on. And so I went back to the police station. And literally, this was the next day from the first day that I tried to file this police report against them. And so they allowed me to file it the second time. But it's just so hard, especially when you're what embarrassed. You, you know, what if you would have killed you? Exactly. You the first time. It's like they wait for you to exactly. get to want to do something. And then. Like, that's just dumb. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, and, it's hard. And I commend you, Heather, for sharing your story because it's a lot. It's hard to work through these situations man. before, during, and after. Even after the trauma still takes over you at times. That's what, like, especially this, raising I, girls, too. Like, you gotta, and then you gotta, like, talk to the girls, like, telling the girls, like, they don't, don't, don't date a guy like your, your father, you know? So, I, or, that, like, don't date a guy like this. It's so hard. Then when you see them in, as they get older in the relationship that they're in and you notice signs. And things, and you're trying to talk to them, but you know they're not hearing you because, like, they just thinking like, "Oh, mom, no, this is not that your situation. This is not how you know." But it's like I see it, you know. That's a that's a red flag. Don't go to it. So it's like now you got to really. I'm so protective over my girls, and at least I try to be as much now that they're older as they let me be. Like it's 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 harder, you know. And I don't want them to have to learn from that mistake when they could just be, know my mistake exactly you know? right and, but that's because a lot of us we got to learn it on our own to really yeah. get it. and i think unfortunately right with with each of my relationships my ex-husband once i it clicked that he was like narcissistic sociopath i was like oh i will, I will always recognize hmm. i can't hear you uh-oh, you went away, Heather. In my back? Oh, no. Okay, there you <laughs> are. Okay. Yeah. yeah, after that first one, I was like, I'll recognize the signs. This will never happen to me again. And then I got Romeo'd. And again, I was like, I was trying so hard to, like, have the approval of a man that I literally sacrificed myself. Literally, like, my whole body. <laughs> and... Then this last one, I was like, well, at least I'm not at the club. I got to be a mm. stay-at-home mom. And the good thing about, like, all of this, though, is that during this time, instead of, like, sitting in everything and, like, accepting it, I guess, because I could have. I easily could have. Whenever I sit back and I look at, like, all the women in my family, my grandmother, Jake, and I understand now her ex-husband was abusive and like I never I never understood why she was so shaky but like I get it now I shake and I recently like just for anyone who's out there and still, like if you can find within yourself that is what has saved me through all of this I recognize that people project whatever they're trying to put in whatever they're trying to tell you you are who that you are it's because deep inside, there's something in them that's off, and they feel that about themselves. And they're trying to make you feel the same type of shitty. And I started to recognize that and kind of let shit flow. Like, okay, you said that, I'm going to flow off me as best as I could. Because the emotional abuse has been, like, using my child trauma against me. And, like, mm -hmm. just burp shit. And... Yeah, I found peace within these last few years within myself. And I've devoted every second that I had to me changing my mindset so I would never settle for this again. And I've stayed this long because I I didn't have anyone. I don't have anyone. I moved to Colorado to get away from a toxic family. And that's what I'm I'm trying to take away from my toxic family and build a healthy family. Right. But whenever you're coming out of like toxic and abusive situations, you have to realize also that there are things that you did as safety mechanism. There are toxic traits that you took on that after you leave, 
you need to check yourself about as well and make sure that you're changing your own habits, your own patterns, and you're becoming a healthy. And that's what like during this time, it's been a blessing and a curse. Um, Cause I've had so much time to like, throw myself into self development and like get my children and I into therapy and really take it all very seriously. But it's still a piece of me that like had such low self worth that it it took until recently when I called the police and like what you guys were talking about earlier about you're in for 24 hours. Whenever it comes to domestic violence, these men are in for 24 hours. They can post bail and get out. Mm-hmm. And that piece of paper, that protection order, is I mean, only good at you using it. But whenever you're in a jail, whenever it's mental abuse, I've let I've let him in after having a protection. Like I let him in until recently, and like the last time, I literally had to have my friend who's in New York call the police for me. And this is why, like, I police just need to get better on all of this. We need more education on domestic violence, recognizing the signs, because even like what what's all across the news that Gabby case mm-hmm. should have been caught ahead of time. Like the domestic violence signs should have been like that was that's so. What we, that's what I was seeing on my post, and I was like, where was, is there a domestic violence walk? How come this awareness is not set so far? I understand breast cancer is very important too. Like. We have a lot of walks and everything. They, you know, stress it, but people are dying from the hands of other people in relationships. People that supposedly supposed to love them and make vows with them or create a relationship with them. And we need walks. We need more. We need more education because it's younger. I know teenagers in domestic violence relationships. I was a teenager, almost coming out of my teens, rather, in a domestic violence relationship, it or even sexually abusive, um, but from in in the house. More of this need it's just so it's looked at so vaguely and it needs to be stressed like it, it needs to be stressed just as much as anything else just as much as because it's like I'm I have friends that lost family members due to domestic violence like it's just it needs to be stressed so much and Jordan sent um the hot the domestic national domestic violence hotline so if you know anybody or if you are in a domestic violence relationship if you if you're in a any kind of abusive relationship please call 800-799-SAFE that's 800-799-7233 call that number get some help because it's there's help out there and we just really need to stress how people can get help with this because it should not sexual abuse don't physical spiritual financial emotional psychological all those are abusive and sometimes like I said we can be that too and we don't even know when we tell somebody shut up stupid that sticks some people call you can call somebody stupid so much they start to think they're stupid and we just verbally yeah. abuse them now we just mentally abuse them we can call somebody ugly or, or monkey or you know things like that and it starts to become in a head and it starts to bring in insecurities and that's some that's mm-hmm. abuse and we're not mm-hmm. realizing yeah huh? that's why i say words are so important yeah. like they, they literally they call it spelling like what you're putting out there is important in the bible it says it talks about like the power of your tongue something like 16 times yeah and how it's so important you can speak life or you can speak death into someone and it's you a, can it was a me- oh, go ahead, sorry. you're ugly let's i don't think hurtful jokes are funny I don't know right. where I was confused in society that we, we thought that that would just be cool, that that's the real things, but like, it doesn't make sense. Why would you talk down on someone when you could empower someone, when you could use your words to do better? And yeah, that's it's very important the way we speak to each other and we don't even realize it like in the little things. Yeah, the little things. It was a meme. It was a picture that I think I posted a while ago. It was the of the mother speaking and her tongue was going through the son and it's out of the son's mouth. So like he was hearing everything she was saying and she was, whatever she was saying was coming to him and then just basically out of her, his mouth. So I'm you growing up and you are, you hear your parents call, you know, catting on each other or being a certain way, talking it's, to people a certain way. That's why that was no drama. Yeah. 
that one video with the little girl she was in daycare and she was seeing uh, she got put in the corner and she's like mm -mm, you listen I can't wait to get up out of here because when I get up out of here and this and that and she's talking like this and she getting smart with teaching mm -mm. I'm like that's her mama or her grandmama that she didn't heard right. talk like that and now it's coming out of her so we gotta watch we gotta be careful our actions and that's why I tell my daughters all the time when my baby was when my youngest was little I always tell them like she's mimicking everything we're doing when we do this a lot she started doing this like her be behavior is learned just like when you say you lived in a, your, your town is, uh, is racist and then they it comes out and as they grow up that's learned like we don't know race when we're kids it's awesome right be all yep. behavior is learned so when a, a child is abused and that's what i say even with the whole r kelly thing or whatever as he was abused when the child is abused at home it, it, it affects them. It can affect them in a, a stronger way where they say, I'm not going to have this or it's going to affect them. If this is a way, this is how I'm supposed to be or this is normal to me. It's all learned. So we got to always watch how we are, are, are around some, our children and around people. But then too, we got to understand that our kids watch us. And when they see us going through these types of relationships, if we don't leave, like the fight that paramedic told me, if we don't leave and they remember this and they see all this it's going to be normal to them and they're going to go through it. It seems like it's, 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 it's so crazy how it almost seems like it's hereditary, like sexual abuse. It can start with your mother or your grandma getting sexually abused and then your mother gets sexually abused and kids get sexually abused and it trickles down. And then the same with domestic violence, the parent, the grandparent in an abusive relationship, a physical, and then the mother, then the kid, it trickles, which is so crazy because from there up, they wasn't strong enough to leave before it got the kids got to see it and be worse. So the parents don't know how to leave, and then the kids are in it. So we got to learn behavior and be careful with it. Yes, that's what I was saying about like my family and like the women in my family. I'm realizing like they were they sacrificed themselves for the family, and like I get it. You are supposed to like compromise for your family, but you're not supposed to sacrifice yourself. Yeah. Women, should, right. like you still get to have dreams and be a mother. You don't have to choose yeah. one or the other. Right. You multifaceted human being and do it all. Right. And <laughs> growing up, I that like, it's so funny because I have all brothers, two older, two younger. That's how I like, grew up. I also have an older sister, but she was already out of the house. And like my baby sister, I was out of the house was born so it was me and the boys and I think my parents my mom literally said she didn't want me to think I had to be domesticated so mm -hmm. I didn't learn how to cook I didn't climb up. I was not like I didn't learn the life skills I needed it is not being domesticated <laughs> life skills I needed um especially as a single mom um right and I really had to reshape my mindset around everything whenever it was like, with my ex-husband like I worked, I, we both worked a lot, but like whenever it came to like cooking and cleaning and stuff, I still had the attitude like, no, you are not going to ask me. Nice. Right. <laughs> what? Like, hell no. And that's how I felt about taking out the garbage because my mama made the boys do it. So when I moved to my apartment, I used to put my landlord or one of his sons came over, I made them take out my garbage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Compromise. But that's what, I'm like in this last like I've, I've really re reshaped my head around domestication and like all of that because I think a relationship one right now, my little one, I want to be like, as you said, like, I think it's so important after you get out of a relationship to be alone. That is mm -hmm. one thing I used to criticize my friends about in high school. I never really did high school until I got to college. And I was like, you guys just like date, and break up and date a dif different dude. And then, it's funny because, like, every time I've been critical of someone, God humbles me, okay? God puts me in a position where he's like, oh, yeah, you want to criticize them? Now what are you going to do? And that's what's happened. I realized, like, now is that I'm an adult, I'm like, oh, my God, that's what I've been doing. I've been rushing into a new relationship. <laughs> and, yeah, we got to stop that. Let's yeah. go into some like, comments. We have Marlon who said your te you test your uh, is a testimony for your daughters. You are a strong woman. Never give up. Strong women's sister keeper. Uh, all his hashtags. <laughs> I commend you for leaving. 
not a not a false speak truth for other domestic violence survivors. Thank you, Martin. Then he put up YWCA USA. Uh, Martin, if you're still on, what is YWCA USA? Like the YMCA, but it's instead of. It's for women. It's for women. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, for women. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my mom said, you know, when you call the police, they do nothing. But when a woman kills the abuser, she does like. My mom watches a lot of Snap too, y'all. So, <laughs> but that's true. But sometimes, because it can be, uh, it depends on, um, like, if it's the if they can get it as uh, self defense. If the woman who has been really reporting, or a lot of women don't report abuse, so it's that that's a hard case to try too, because a lot of women do say that it, they was when they kill their husband. They can say like, "Oh, he was abusive," and sometimes it don't work. It, it works against them because if there was no report, and then the family be like, "Oh, he was not abusive," blah blah blah, so they can, you know, get a be a do life for it. But sometimes that's a hard case to fight. Martin also said, "Let's lift our hearts and pray for those who have been affected." Yes, definitely. That thing, and then my mom said, "The thing about leaving is that nobody will, will let you in because they don't want the drama." Right. And is that's kind of true, but at the same time, we got to think about it like if he comes to the house, then you just got to call the police. You just can't, at least you feel more, more safe to let them in because you don't, not to let them in because you don't want the drama, but you rather don't stay in an abusive relationship and get murdered. And then that's going to be heavy on your heart. Like, dang, I was just being, no, I didn't want that at my house, so I didn't let them come and stay with me. But now she did, you know. Yeah. Or now, but, I mean, we'll a lot up. of the family members don't want to get involved. That's what really it comes down to. So they say um, you always go back. They be like, we fight them or whatever. Then you gonna right. go back. But and at the same time, it's like, it, yeah. But at the same time, it's like you don't know that one. But then two, take a chance because you can be helping somebody. You can be saving somebody's life when they're in your family. So yeah, but it, that's like a double edged sword, unfortunately, yeah. because there are many people yeah, who have yeah. died helping someone get out of an abusive relationship yeah and so that's like it's a hard thing you want to help people but you know that's something you just got to put in god's hands because you really do want to help people but sometimes depending on who the abuser is it's like he don't give yeah. a f about you so you know he ain't right. gonna give a f about, right. about me that's right. why it sucks whenever it comes to like getting the police involved too because what i was saying earlier is my friend called the police for me and the police uh, they came and they knocked on my door and when my ex opened the door, they said, hey, do you know, insert friend's name? And I was like, yeah. And they said, they, she told me that you told her to call the police. Wow. And I'm like, I don't realize, like, this was, like she explained the situation. And you just came to my door. And at that point, I was like, I don't trust the police. I don't want to talk to you guys. <laughs> like, you guys already came to the door, like beef is what it felt like, like starting stuff for me. And it was, yeah, like, so after that, I didn't like, they, oh, did he put his hands on you? Did he do this? Did he do that? And I was just like. And now you're asking the police, who are y'all really protecting at this point if you're yeah, outing right. my friend? Right. Exactly. I was just like, this is, it was so, it's so twisted and the police, like, they, I don't, I don't get it. Like, is there not training? Is I don't understand where the connect is. I guess maybe once you've been through it, it's way more. Maybe obvious. he's abusive to his wife. Yeah, <laughs> so. this is true. But this is part of yeah. one of the things that they were talking about with defunding the police because they don't they they're not helpful in a lot of these situations. You're making it worse. Like if I need you to speak in codes or do something or so, like. So now he know that I holler at my girl and she gonna call the police for me. So even though I'm right. not dialing nine one one, you know my safe word is angel, and I didn't text her angel five times. Oh, that's why the police showed up five times. Now yeah. I'm gonna choke you because you think you slick. So it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I I do understand why they want to take like those type of functions away from the police because mm -hmm. a lot of them don't really don't really know what to do you know, in that situation or they make the situation worse. So, yeah. Which makes you wonder, yeah, like, where are going if y'all aren't trained on this? Right. I called the police on my neighbor, um, boyfriend. Before. She was so abusive to her. She's a, she's across the hall from me. And she's come to my house, like, after. And we all used to hang together at the apartment. That's why I stopped really getting to know my neighbors for a long time because we always go over there. We used to play cards. We all used to hang out. 
easy, you know, have fun or whatever. I didn't know he was abusive to her until like one time I was hearing him, them, you know, fighting and stuff. And she she came in my house one day and I was telling her like, you need to leave, like you know, you need to go. Like you got, she has small kids too. And I was telling her like, you need to go. And she said that she had a house, another place, a little further away that he didn't know about. I said, well, go move there, like go. And she's like, well, I don't, uh, you know, he's home, blah, 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 whatever. So one day I was getting ready to leave and I heard them fighting. And so I went in my car and I dialed number one. And I, dialed, I called anonymously. She asked me, did I want to leave a name? I said, no, I'm going to remain anonymous. And so um, the police came. I was I was standing outside. The police came. I left them in the building. I said, I only have to tell you where they are because you can hear them. You can literally hear them outside. And so they ran up. So they caught him in the act of beating on her. And so they went in, so they arrested him. So then she finally was able to move her stuff out. And so her mom called me, I was her mom, grandma. She was just like, thank you so much for calling the police. You know, she's able to get, get her stuff. She's able to get out. Like, thank you so much for calling. But then like, she called me and she was like, he had called her. And he was like, I know it was Sophia that called the police on me and this and that and all this stuff. So now I'm living across the way from him. She's gone. You know what I'm saying? And now he got an inkling that it was me that called the police. So now I'm like, now I'm kind of scared because I'm like, I don't know what he's going to do to me. And he was like a little thug like dude or whatever. And I'm like, so now I got to deal with the cops on this dude. And now I got to watch how I go out there. Mm -hmm. She's safe. I kind of put myself in a position, even though I was anonymous, the police never said who I was, but he already probably knew that I, I wasn't going to call. But anybody in the building could have called really, but he just assumed because I she ran to my house before when he was abusing her. And so it's like, that's why I said, now I ain't getting to know none of my neighbors. Cause I don't know what's going on in their houses. Cause I don't want to be a part of it. Or Cause that puts you in a compromising position. Yeah. yeah. I'm not moving out anyway, but still it was just like, yeah, that was scary because now I got to wear the fear for my life because the woman he was be had uh, to be able to take his anger out on is gone. So who's left? His, his single, his neighbor, I'm single with my daughters. You know, I don't have a man at the house. So yeah. It's, 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 so. I think, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't know statistics, but it seems as though most people, unless he's super violent, it seems like he a lot it. of men won't abuse someone else mm -hmm. per se. That's if true. They feel like she ain't going. You know what I'm saying? If they know right. she's not right. that type of woman, or she ain't that type of person, or she, you know, she fight back. It's like. You know, because, I mean, just, I guess they know. They know who they can do it to. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a couple of dudes who threatened to, like, hit me. And it was like, nah, mm, I can't do that with you. Like, dang, you sit down and make a conscious choice about this? Right. This one I could whoop her ass, but this one I right. can't. Like, um, but, you know, most men, too, that hit women, they don't fight men. They do mm. not fight men. I remember when... um my kid's father, when he um, got into a fight with, well, he didn't even get into the fight. The guy wanted to fight him. He would not fight this dude. Like, literally, he was calling for me. I was in a shower. I had to run out the shower in just a robe and try to and help him, you know, with this guy, you know, get this guy off him or tell the guy, like, don't. And the guy and him, they were friends or whatever. I don't know what happened outside, but they got into it. He would not put his hands on this dude. And I, he called for my help. And what I do, run outside in just a robe, to go and help and try to get this dude to not fight him. And my role opened up net, full naked, risking my, you know what I'm saying, myself to help this dude. But, and I'm thinking my head, like, so you so tough with me, but then you won't fight a dude. And then, like, even after I left him and he was dating another uh, girl, and I was, I moved upstairs from his girlfriend because me and her was, you know, we was cool. And so, um, I was asking him, we was moving my stuff in, it was cold. And I had asked him, I was like, hey, help me, uh, help us move, help us move in. And he was like, nah, it's too cold for you. Or whatever. I'm like, so you ain't gonna help me and your kids move into our apartment? So he, um, so then I get upstairs in my apartment. Like, my furniture's not even flipped over yet, like to sit. He's flipped my coffee table over, sitting on my coffee table, smoking a blunt in my apartment. I'm like, hey, dude, you need to get up out of here. My door open, ladder, walk up here anytime. Don't come in. This is your kid's house. You want to disrespect your kid's house like this. I don't think you got full access to my house, my uh, place, because I'm living over, you know, above your girlfriend. So we get into it, and this time it got to the point where he, I guess, he felt like he was able, to, he could put his hands on me. But this time it wasn't going. I'm not your woman. I'm not in love with you. None of that. We've been over. 
I, I whooped his his tail. And then I went downstairs. My best friend was helping me move. And I told her, I said, me and Jason's got in a fight. So he came downstairs. Um, um, some people, I'm not going to, I don't know, the, I don't know these people. Two guys came, well, one guy actually came and just beat him up when he got out and beat him up real bad. So I went and called the police and though the other, another guy, he was trying to like stab him, but I had to stop him like, no, don't stab him. Then the other guy was going to make him kill him. I said, don't kill him, you know? And so he gonna get up and say, you going to say, don't kill me? Dude, I could have had him kill him. So he, so I called the police and police go down downstairs to get him he's like so i get the guys who just that he's oh i think he broke my rib like now you crying because you got beat up by a dude and this dude was like way younger than me then police asked like you know the guy who fought him i said i don't know who that dude was that dude saw that he hit me and he came and he just fought him i said i don't know who that guy is and so um they took him to jail and what made me mad was the fact that his girlfriend at the time bailed him out of jail and she was talking about using her rent money to get him out of jail, I said, you know, if you get him out of jail, all he's going to do is come home and take it out on you. Because he know he can't put his hands on me no more. But she, she bailed him out. What did he do? I heard them fighting. Right back to it. Right back to it. Mm -hmm. And she and she stayed with him for like four years. And the thing is, I told her, and the funny part is, she didn't leave him. It took him to leave her. She was never mm. going to leave, I don't think. She had no kids like him. He was living with her. He was cheating all over her, hitting on her. And she she would, she did not leave. She had no, she had no reason for him. But I guess I don't know whatever reason. I don't know what her reason was for him. But she, he left her. That's the only why reason why they broke up. But it's crazy. But it took a man. He they won't fight men. They will not fight. They will only they weak. They will only put their hands on a woman. And you know the statistics of police officers who are abusive towards their partner is so disheartening. I'm not gonna say it and like spew it off incorrectly, but research it. It's disgusting. And then also, I think at least in 2017, whenever I started like doing research on domestic violence and statistics and stuff, back then, statistically, men were women's biggest threat. And that is so scary to think about. And like, whenever you're right, like, at least with me, after a certain amount of time, like, I started learning more like, oh, fuck men, men ain't shit, you know, like started saying these things. And back to like, words are important. Whenever you're repeating these things over and over again, I believe at least you are attracting ain't shit men into your life. You are attracting Absolutely. the energy back to you. And so once I started like really reshaping my mind, I haven't met a man that like, I... Per, like I want to be alone for a really long time, but I have a lot of like guy friends that I'm like, you are a good ass dude. You give me hope in humanity. You make yeah. me believe like men are good. There are good ass men out there. And like, when you I find friends. them, let me know. No, I, mean, I know, right? That's what I'm like. <laughs> I have friends. Um, I've heard uh, <laughs> that. I still don't yeah. trust me. <laughs> no, you, got, you got the good man and the friend is the bum no that's right. not how it is we yeah like, we like all me and my bros no your bros is hoes and you the only good one no I'm sure. that part. <laughs> you are who you hang out with yeah that's what i think yeah. it's it's you are the equivalent of like the five people you spend the most time with absolutely and Absolutely. that's why once I learned that fact too, I was like, oh no, I got to change who I'm hanging out with and change who I'm around. And that's what I've taken the time to do like over these past few years is like cut all the toxic stuff out, except for the toxic stuff that I've still been living in. But <laughs> I worked on everything outside of the relationship. I started cutting people off. I started changing my friendships. I started listening to podcasts and listening to inspirational mm -hmm. speakers and calling them my mentors, even though, you know, they've never met me in their life. But I look up to them like they're my friends and my mentors. And once I started, like, talk, I say talking to, once I cut everyone off and I started listening to people who are where I want to be in life, that's whenever things have started changing for me. Like, even with just the other day speaking up in class and, like, having this opportunity to sit here and be with you guys and talk to you guys – I 
don't feel like I would have been able to do this. I mean, I wouldn't have. I was in a minute, I like for a minute, I was like stuck in my situation. I was sitting in it. I was letting it get to me. I was letting life happen to me instead of realizing that like life happens for me. It doesn't happen to me. Absolutely. And so I've taken this time to like really sit on everything that I've been through and become the woman that I want to be with. And I'm so excited. Like, thank you guys so much for this opportunity to be vulnerable, um, to speak on my life for the first time, I guess. Um, I feel like this is just the very beginning for me. Oh, yeah. I, I had dreams. I had aspirations. Well, you have dreams. I have, you exactly. have aspirations. Yes. Because your life is not over and, and you are not defined by your past. Yes. yes, absolutely. And you it's are, crazy. You're starting a whole new journey, and you're gonna absolutely you're starting a new journey for your you and your kids. If anything yes. don't make you stronger, if you can't make yourself stronger, what makes me stronger is thinking about my kids, 100%. thinking about their future, their life, and that's what keeps me going. If anybody ever asks me like, what keeps you going, I always say it's my kids. My kids is what what keeps me going all the time. This is and by you having the strength and courage Hello, to come ladies. on today, I was going to say, and by you having the strength and courage coming on today, you don't know how many other women you've inspired to potentially leave oh, yeah. the situation that they're currently in. So thank you for yeah. taking the time to do that. Thank yeah. you. You actually helped me a lot too. You know what I'm saying? Just listening to everyone's story, because like I would, you know, I always say, you know, well, I ain't never been never experienced domestic violence like i've had this i've had that but i've never experienced domestic violence but just like even you sh the things that you shared watching like the series on netflix and it just has opened my eyes to a lot of things of knowing that i have been in those situations mm -hmm. and those the same scenarios that you said that you were in just that beginning that let me let me help you let me take you away from this and then it turns into something sour and it's like wow that has happened to me on more than one occasion. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I met a guy who was, oh, let me do this for you. Let me take you out of this situation. And then he got to that situation and dogged me every chance he could get. Like, mm -hmm. dog walked me every chance he could get. And not even, but he never put his hands on me. Never put his hands on me. Never touched me. Never even raised his voice. Never right. even raised his voice in me. He would tell me, manipulation. He would tell me I want to say that manipulation. He would like literally like, yeah, I was just telling my friend, and this sticks with me to this day all the time. All the time. We were at his friend's house and she well, his okay. friend's girlfriend was like starting a new business or something like that. And I literally I had dropped everything for this man. I quit my job. I stopped paying my bills because he was saying I was cheating all the time. I'm like, I'm going to prove to you how much I love you, right? When was I going to prove how much I love myself? That's another story. So then I'm like, okay. So now I've lost everything. I done resorted to stealing. He called me a bum because I had to steal gas to put in my car because you're not giving me money. I stole from Kmart because we didn't have soap nor food to eat. So I stole to make sure that we had something to eat, something to wash our bodies with. And he just talked about me and dogged me out like I just dogged me out. And then after he sat up there and the dude was telling, you know, like my girl doing this, and he like, oh man, that's dope, that's so dope, man. You man, I. Woo -wee. And he literally looked at me and was like, I wish I had a woman I could be proud of in front of them. And it was so mm. low. And I wow. know they didn't hear it. I wish I had a woman I could be proud of. Wow. And I was just like, wow. Okay. <laughs> and then just like little things he would say to me. And just and it's not even him. Just like you talking about some people having you walk in the middle of the night. My, my first love, the man I loved to death. He used to do that. I, 79th and Halston in, in, in Chicago. And if you don't know anything about that, that's where the bus stop used to be. Oh, yeah. And I used to be walking at 2 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. to the bus stop because he he was too afraid to get on the expressway to take me home. So I literally would get on the bus at 2 o'clock in the morning and a bum cussed me out. Mm. Mm. A bum was like, mm. if I ever catch you on this corner again, I, I'm going to whoop your ass, madang on. So, like, there's no way <laughs> nobody that you call your man who got a car should put you on the bus. No way. Girl, and thank God you're here to tell that story. Because yeah. a lot of women don't make it out. 
don't allowed to tell those stories. Yeah. And I had to take that bus from 79th and Halstead all the way to North Avenue and Halstead. And then I would have to walk over, no, North to North Avenue. Then I took North Avenue down to Armitage. So I'm on the Northwest mm-hmm. side and I would literally have to walk, not to Armitage, that's the other street, to whatever that was, Costner. And I would have to walk from North Al- North Avenue to uh, Armitage. So that's like four blocks in the dark, complete pitch black, under a viaduct. I had no other choice but to do it. And that's I did. So crazy. And it's so crazy that you didn't, until now, you weren't able to recognize that. Like, we, we aren't taught that. We're not taught that that's abuse. And it, Mm-hmm. We need right. to share, like more stories like this need to be shared because like you definitely that is abuse that is 100% abuse and I know that still sticks with you too today because in the emotional stuff whenever they get in your head and they're talking down on you and like, how you were saying so so how he would like mess things up for you whenever right before you go to work that's what like that's what it's been for me like the past few years and like even with my ex-husband he would do that stuff where they see you getting ahead they see you yep. still striving, even though they're throwing the security in them. They're just yeah, they they like they're trying to break you down. They are trying so hard, and I knew for was, them to like see you still thing, pushing. But it was it was kind of like a, a crazy thing too, because like the girlfriend after me and the girlfriend before now, he the young girl that he you know had whatever he would start trying to he would make try to make them like be me, like he would try to make them wear wigs. You know, I always wore the wigs. He was trying to make them wear wigs and he was trying to make them wear heels because I always wore heels. It was almost like he was trying to make them me, which is so weird yeah. because I'm like, you didn't even, like, it was, it was, it was just weird that like he would try to make them me. And I would tell like the girl who used to be my friend, who was my friend, I guess he, he's still associates. Um, and I would tell her, I said, well, you don't even wear wigs. Like, you don't even wear makeup. Like, why are you trying to have, why are you going wig shop with me? Oh, Jason, what's his name? Oh, you know, he want to see me. Um, you know, he told me, you know, I should wear wigs or whatever, or, should, you know what I'm saying? I, I just want to put on this makeup. And I'm like, why are you, why is he doing that? Like, that's me. That's not you. You know, like, you don't see this? Like, it's, it was weird. And I'm like, why is he trying to make you me? It's, it's, it was, it was like you. And he told me too one time after, like, even when she was, he was with her and I was with my youngest daughter's father. And I was telling her, we live like, right, I lived above her in the apartment above her. And he would be downstairs with her. And we all, this, we all, you know, all that has happened in all the past and years past later. And we'd have moved on from it. So we was, you know, cordial because of the kids or whatever. And I remember I told him, I said, hey, you know, I got, you know, this guy, he's living with your girls. You know, don't want to meet him, maybe me, you and her, you know, we can, you know, have dinner or something so that you can see who's, you know, living with your kids. He said, I know you moved on, Sophia, but I still haven't fully closed that chapter with me and you yet. And I don't know how long it's going to be before we uh, close that chapter. Well, I don't know. You better, that chapter should have been, that's your fault. Because that book is closed. That book's been closed for years. I've been out of a that type of relationship for, what, 20, 19 years now? So, yeah. that. So, but at the time, I think my baby probably was like, she was a year. And so, and so it's been, it was six years later, though, five years later at the time he told me that, but so I, you fully never moved on, but you felt like you wanted to keep me, but you didn't know how to treat me, but you can't move on from me. And that's like the weird part. I feel like that's that narcissistic behavior though, that control mm-hmm. like wants to like one, him turn, trying to turn the girls after you into you. Yeah. But it's all that's what it is. Yeah. Then, and then they went along with it. Without the for thing. us, all of it. Like they, it's a control. It's a power dynamic. Like you're not going to abuse someone that you love. Period. Right. Like if you, if it is real love and you have the love within yourself for yourself as well, you're not going to treat someone shitty. Period. Like it's not. But he grew up in an abusive. He grew up in an abusive household he saw his mom being abused and like I said it trickles you know yep. instead of him saying I'm never going to be that way to a woman he fell into the part of being that way that's normal yep. and it never stopped I don't know now if it's if it I know like 
his previous, well, his he had a smaller down, but I know it was still going on then. So I don't know if he'll ever, I don't think, it'll, uh, I don't know if it's going to take him to be 60 <laughs> years old or something for it to fully stop. But I don't know, but it just, it never stopped. It continue on with the next, the next one, the next one, the next woman. And I'm sorry, I can't, I don't know every woman. I can call all y'all. I, I think that that's, but, it's so important for us to like recognize that, like for anyone in a relationship like that, thinking they can change him or her, it's not going to happen. They're going to leave you and then repeat the behavior because mm -hmm. it is, that is who they are. They've shown us their true colors. And even though we want to relate them, we need to see them for who the fuck they are. And it's so hard, but yeah, like they're not going to change. They didn't change for you. They're not going to change for the next one. The only person they can change mm -hmm. for is themselves. And until they make that yeah. choice, it's not happening. It's and not. that's like, yeah, it's so hard to, to recognize. That's why signs need to be recognized. Like if it's a sign where you start, they start to like start throwing things or breaking things, get out because that's just the start of it. When they start to behind doors, like curse you out or call you out of your name, start verbally abusing you. Cause it starts with like the verbal, it starts with the throwing things. It starts with the cheating and don't care if you know, if you, if you, if you found out, get out. Then it starts to where it starts to be the pushing or the shoving, get out. Then it starts to be, it's, it's, it's hidden in private behind closed doors in front of nobody then it gets to where if you got kids it's going to start being in front of the kids then it's going to be to where it started being in front of their friends it's then then that's when it's, most women don't even report abuse until it gets to at its worst somebody can be abusive just like the whole rihanna and chris brown thingy i was this was that that when it was reported that wasn't the first time i hear chris it is it, when it starts to get reported when it gets to be at its worst so a lot of women are right now at home being abused and men, but are not saying anything because they they're still going through the motion. It's once once it become where it gets so bad, that's when they, it's going to come out. But we got to learn to report it and learn to recognize it and leave in those small moments because so that because some people don't get out and it only get reported as in death once you die. Um, but Heather, thank you so much for sharing this story. And my mom said you are so right. And so, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I put the number to the domestic violence hotline in the comments, and I also have it on our page. And um, Heather, uh, is where can people find you if they maybe want to talk to you about their story or uh, if they have any questions for you? Where uh, um, where can they find you on like your social media? Yes, you can find me at who's that lady dot H D. Who's that? Is it like yes? Who's that lady? That's not that. <laughs> <laughs> so people would sing that every time. <laughs> so it's W H O S E or W H O S W H O S T H A T L A D Y dot H D. Like Heather Diane's or high def. Whichever. <laughs> or both. Yes, both. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for giving me the platform to share my story. Um, you guys started a movement for me. I told myself, instead of like making a New Year's resolution, this year I chose a word of the year. And my word this year was freedom. And I can't think of a better way to celebrate my freedom than finally having an opportunity to really be vulnerable and tell my story with women who I feel are supportive and understand and listened. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you well, for first, being We appreciate you for even coming on the air. Mm -hmm. And you There's a lot of people that wouldn't have done what people. you did. Oh, what you say? Yeah, because I honestly, I reached, I, I'm sorry, I reached out to, you know, some people and a lot of people aren't ready to talk or aren't ready to share. And hopefully this will help 
you know, people come out and speak about it because, like I said, more awareness needs to be brought to light for domestic violence and all the signs and all everything domestic violence. Was like, like Michelle, some, she just thought maybe it was just physical. She didn't know there were other things. And a lot of people don't like people know about the spiritual and the financial, you know, and there's so much because I've been studying it. I've been looking since ever since I've been a, and I was. There was been a survivor to that, I say. I um been, I wanted to do a plat a TED talk uh -oh. Bye bye so so. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Her laptop said no, nah, we straight. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't giving out no more information. There she go. Stuff went out. Uh oh. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and it's like my, I'm trying to put in Heather's um, correct email, but it's like uh, this iPad is letting me make it keep spacing. It's like keep all of correcting. Mm. Yeah, so. Thank is you. Is it somebody won't stop texting me yeah. and I keep telling him to go and stop texting me? Is that abuse? <laughs> That's harassment. Yeah, harassment. Right I was gonna there. say that's being a stalker at that point. Yeah, that's harassment. So yeah, it's kind of a form of abuse. So yeah, but, but we I all need to learn this. Yes, yeah. it's so important. It's so important that I think that for me, why I haven't shared my story for so long is the shame, the shame in it. I I felt so ashamed of really everything like I whenever I get real with myself and I hold myself accountable I put myself through a lot I put my children through a lot I made choices in this I was a victim but then I also made choices and I've held so much shame around that mm -mm. and I've been doing a lot of shadow work and like really focusing on healing and going to therapy and taking it seriously learning new coping mechanisms and I'm tired of hiding behind my shame. It happens. Mm -hmm. It fucking yeah. happens. I can't take anything back, but I can move forward and I can help other people. Yeah. And I hope so that's the goal afterwards. Yes. I hope other people recognize like it's so hard, but once you start using your voice, it's hard to stop. You mm -hmm. want to keep going. You want to keep sharing and you want to keep helping others. And that's why I hope that everyone gets a bit of this type of freedom. Thank you guys so much for this. Oh, you're welcome. I wish I can share the video that I did when I was in my church um, training and we had to do a um, 10 minute inspirational uh, speaking, motivational speaking. And I did mine about domestic violence. I'm actually going to try to um, find it because I wanted to share it in class um, on tomorrow. So I'm hoping I can find it. But um also, we're actually, Heather and I and a couple of other classmates are getting together and we're doing um, a audio, video, um, legal and domestic violence. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, once we get together, I am going to sh um, share it because I think it's going to be really powerful. So, yeah, I'm excited. Again, <laughs> thank you. My dog is in. It's time for me to go. Uh, <laughs> Very spoiled. Okay, Gavin. Okay, so thank y'all. He got my dog. Thank you, up. <laughs> thank you again, Heather, <laughs> um, for coming on. If you want, if you have any questions for Heather, I put her on uh, how you can reach her. Not dot com, so be dot hd. I don't know. This iPad is crazy. Um, on in the chat, but it's who's that lady dot hd, and um, probably that one. Also, you can find me. Um, you can also hit us up on Monday Morning Talks in our inbox. Sorry, that's the wrong one. Or you can even um, hit us up, me up on my uh, Facebook, Sophia Latrice, L-A-T-R-I-C-E. And Ms. J, where, they can, where can they find you if they want to talk to you? You can find me on Facebook, Jordan Valerie. I have one uh, red in that picture. Do not follow the page <laughs> with the so orange. It is hat. <laughs> <laughs> and then my Instagram, you can follow me at M-I-S-S Jordan underscore radio. And Miss Miss J. 
I mean, Miss Miss J, you are Miss J, Miss 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 Lachey. <laughs> <laughs> well you can find me on facebook and instagram and on youtube under michelle lachey um if you can't find me put an underscore in there like uh instagram michelle underscore lachey i think is it i think so and then michelle lachey uh, michelle lachey makeup or something like that right just mm -mm. Right it's just thing. Michelle Lachey. It's all Michelle Lachey yeah. because even my website is Michelle Lachey. Because if you feel like you can't find me, if you know my name, trust you'll be able to find me. Just put in Michelle Lachey, and I bet you, you gonna see me. You are gonna see some imitators, but they ain't gonna be me. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't never be imitated nor duplicated. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yeah, if you find Michelle Lachey TV, that is not me, okay? That's somebody else. It can be. It was a child. Of no, that's somebody else. else. Her show ain't show. Show oh, my show. My cool. show is my show. Unfortunately, we got an Amber Alert on the phone. Maryville, Indiana, grade 2006 Acura, four-door suspects in Illinois. It was a child abduction. Mm-mm-mm. People just dumb. But okay. Um, well, thanks everybody for watching. Again, thank you, Heather, for coming thank on. You, Heather. I really appreciate it. You are a very strong woman, and I really hope to do a lot of work with you in the future. And Absolutely. one day we're gonna be up on that TED Talk stage talking about yeah. this. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you all. Thank you all for watching. Thank you everybody for commenting, joining in, and um parting the show. You can always see the show again on our Monday Morning Talk page and also on our YouTube page. Please, please, please subscribe to our YouTube page. Sorry, gotta push, we got to push that page. So subscribe to our YouTube page, guys. Um, you know, get us up there and everything. Watch our, all of our shows are on our YouTube page. So if you miss the episode of any show, you can always go on our YouTube and find it and watch it. All right. Say bye, ladies. Bye, <laughs>